Russia's invasion into Ukraine has been absolutely brutal. Uh, 2.8 million uh, civilians have fled the country seeking refuge in neighboring countries. And civilians are dying as a result of the Russian military targeting residential areas, hospitals and apartment buildings. Now, luckily there are some acts of kindness that we can turn to when we're feeling that the situation is super dire, if you're feeling depressed. And we've got a little roundup for you all, okay? These are touching stories that I wanted to share with you. For instance, on the border of Ukraine and Moldova, people have dressed up as clowns to cheer up the children who are arriving as refugees. We have a video of this. Understand that the culture is a little different. Here in America, clowns are scary. But apparently over in Eastern Europe, clowns are amusing and fun. Let's watch. Well, look, I never thought anybody would get me to like a clown, but uh, nice job, mission are you, accomplished. Are you tearing up a little bit? No, 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 but that was wonderful, super sweet. I love that. I love it too. Um, okay, not to turn this into a, a bit of a downer, but like you know, since we're talking about kids and and what they're suffering, um, you know. Ukrainians need humanitarian aid. And it's really interesting to see the kinds of things that they're asking for. So there's the obvious stuff that they're asking for. Well, one of the things that stood out to me on this list was that they're asking for essentially earplugs to shield the kids from hearing certain things as a result of the war. And like, we all have young kids in our families, right? Like I think of my nieces when I see that video and I think of how innocent and and how sweet they are and how you know, innocence gets lost so easily, especially when you see this kind of brutality around you. So I I I watched that video of these adults like trying to make it a little easier for the kids and it makes me really happy. Um so founded in 2002, the Dream Doctors Project is a unique Israeli nonprofit that integrates professional medical clowns, dream doctors into Israeli hospitals by training them to work as members of multidisciplinary care teams dedicated to improving patient well being and enhancing the efficacy of healthcare delivery. Dream Doctors therapeutic approach aims to promote medical clowning as an officially recognized paramedical profession. Fun, fun. Yeah. Well, I do remember. Uh, uh, the Fox News's medical A team. Oh my God! Do you remember them? Oh, how could I forget? Yeah, um, and they would make up outrageous things all the time, and of course later they were caught uh, for sexual anarchy. Uh, let's just let's not make light of it. Sexual misconduct. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, the main guy there. Uh, what was his name? I forget. The yeah. bald guy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I forget. Yeah. So, anyways. Uh, he, he later was brought up on charges. Uh, I thought he was the definition of medical clowning. Uh, but apparently there are actual medical clowns who are wonderful people. So I, I love this. A- any way that everyone can help the Ukrainians is a positive thing. So God bless these folks. Then there is the story of what one charity known as Planting Peace did to help one family that's been displaced as a result of this conflict. So the family has lost their home as a result of the war in Ukraine. And so they were looking for a place to put their dog, right? Because they didn't know what to do with the dog as a result of the fact that they don't have a home. Uh, The owner of this charity, Aaron Jackson, uh, had stopped by a local animal shelter to offer aid and was speaking to the director outside when a family approached walking in front of them on a leash was a beautiful Cocker Spaniel named Bella. So uh, turns out there's the dog, Bella is indeed a beautiful Cocker Spaniel, Uh, love it. After speaking with the family, the shelter director turned to Jackson and said, quote, there's actually refugees 
they're actually refugees and want to forfeit over their dog to want to forfeit over their dog to us because they're homeless and don't have anywhere to go and they don't want their dog to be out in the cold. But within 20 minutes, Jackson was able to set up the family with pet friendly housing. Wow. The joy on everyone's faces was evident, including Bella, who couldn't stop wagging her tail. Let's look at Bella one more time. There she is. Yeah. Now, I think you might be tearing up. Uh, imagine if they saved Charlie for you. Oh, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I could leave Charlie, right? Like, I, Charlie is like my, come on. Every time we saw the, you show the picture, Anna's always like, just come on, come on. He's my little prince. Uh -huh. I tell him every day. <laughs> I love him so much. No, I mean, it's a member of your family. I know people who don't have dogs think it's ridiculous when you say that, but it's true. They bring a lot of happiness to your life. Like, I, I completely empathize with this family, right? Of course, we yeah. all empathize yeah. with the family. And by the way, uh, we have even more uh, incredible stories. So in Berlin, thousands of people uh, greeted Ukrainian refugees with a special message. Uh, let's watch that. On the right side, there is like thousands of people from Berlin offering place to stay. This is absolutely incredible. You just like enter the, the building and there are like thousands of people actually supporting like, and they say they have like a saying in the paper in Ukrainian, in English, in Russian. <laughs> people like, these stories are important, right? Because it reminds you that even though the news is filled with awful stories of terrible people doing terrible things, the majority of people are good. They're good. Like those, they don't need to do that. Yeah. Right? And guys, people always love to create simple solutions. And people like simple solutions. I like simple solutions. Right? Because then you don't have to think too much. But the reality is, the world isn't black and white. It, overwhelming majority of the cases, sometimes it is. But um, so are people good or evil? I mean, I've heard that debate since I was in what, junior high? And I kept screaming in my mind, and then you know me, I'd raise my hand in the screaming. <laughs> All that time, both, both, the answer is obviously both, right? So yeah, but more good than bad. Yeah, I think so, I think so. but. Unfortunately, we all have a little bad in us, and which could be fun. Yeah, right? well, that's a different kind of bad, yeah. and that's definitely yeah. also good. But um, like evil, in, like I don't think that the majority of people have evil in them. No, the problem with the evil uh, folks is that since they lack empathy for others, um, they they accrue power quicker. Yep. Because they don't mind stepping over people, and they don't mind oppressing other people, they don't mind taking from other people. And they have no shame. And so that, unfortunately, are qualifications to get you so called material success, right? And so also power. I mean, Putin, I guarantee you, was not polite on his way up, okay? Neither was Trump. You go down the list, right? And so those guys in our system and worldwide wind up. Advancing more than the good guys do, or more easily than they do, a higher percentage. So, although there might be more good guys overall, the evil folks unfortunately have a quicker and easier path to power. And so that's why you see the dichotomy that you see as few evil people doing massive harm in the world while the rest of us try to clean it up. I mean, look, Stalin in his rise to power had Trotsky exiled and murdered. Uh, he murdered his own son. He mm -hmm. uh, sent his own daughter-in-law to prison where she died. Like he was, yeah, you're right. Absolute brutal uh, behavior, complete evil, and it's that's how they accumulate the power. Yeah, I mean, look at Kim Jong Un in our lifetime. Uh, so I think he killed his uh, uncle with a missile. Uh, he killed his own brother in the in the airport in Southeast Asia with the woman who came up and. Uh, put the poison on his face. Um, so I don't, killed I don't. his ex-girlfriends. Uh, so I mean, good guys have it harder. You got to work much, much harder to accumulate power to use it for good. Right. 
evil guys have a massive advantage. They just shoot missiles at their uncles and they're done with it. And that does make their rise to power much easier. Absolutely. So that's why all of us have to stick together. Otherwise, we're not gonna have a chance against those guys, even though they're a smaller number of human beings, right? So it's so important for the good guys to get together as we're showing you in these videos and say, I'm German, but I'm here for you Ukrainians, mm -hmm. right? And and also Moldova, Israel, you name it, all these wonderful folks stepping up uh, to do the right thing. And by the way, also Russians. Yes. Right, wonderful Russian protesters, reporters, etc. Uh, sticking up for justice as well. So, I mean, my God, if, if the good in the world could unite, uh, evil would be in a lot of trouble. That's why they're always trying to split us apart. Um, I gotta say something. She's gotta say it's, something. I could only say good this. Good news for you, you have a talk show. I know, I know. Okay. I could only say this, uh, this is for our members, okay? Okay. Um, in my last session with my therapist slash career coach, uh, I brought up that I'm like like severely turned on by Vladimir Zelensky, and if that's healthy. <laughs> did you see Helen Hong on Friday? I did. I, I knew did. you were gonna love that. I got annoyed with John when he's like, oh, I'm gonna interrupt this to be a downer and talk about like this is a serious war. It's like, okay, we know John, we know, we know. That's all we talk about. But can we just talk about how hot Zelensky is right now? Yes. <laughs> Helen Hong kept talking about her lady boner. Dude, I get it. I get it. So, like, I asked, um, you know, the person I'm working with, like, I feel like it's wrong. Like, I feel wrong for even feeling what I'm feeling because it's like, am I falling victim to propaganda? Like, what's, you know, I was feeling guilty about it. She's like, what a weird thing to feel guilty about. Why I do you know? Dude, but. And by the way, she like 100% cleared me of any wrongdoing. Oh, then it's good. Yeah. Okay, she's she got a pardon from her own therapist, so we're good. Lady boners totally okay. <laughs> okay. Totally yeah. healthy. No, but like the thing is, like, I feel like Zelensky is playing with my emotions. What? Yeah, no, let <laughs> I'm me pretty explain. sure he's not actively let doing me explain. it. Let I'm me pretty explain. sure he's busy. <laughs> no, no, he's totally thinking about me. <laughs> Could you imagine? I'm like slowly tiptoe out of the room. Okay. It's not just that, okay, it is mostly because of the fact that he's strong. Mm -hmm. And I love strength. I respond well to strength. Like the fact that he's he's risking his life. Like he could have fled the country. He could have been like all the other spineless. You know, people who only cared about being in a position of power because it enriched them and benefited them. He didn't do that. He stayed, he's he's risking his life. There's something so sexy about that. But here's where he he's playing with my emotions. Every time he posts a video, why does he have to do that like that whispery, raspy voice? It's so hot. <laughs> Perhaps because it's his real voice. It's so inappropriate. <laughs> oh. No, it's too much. Could you imagine in the next video? He's like, and Vladimir, I am here, and the defense minister here, and Anna, I am doing the voice on purpose. And he, he's like, <laughs> it's breathy too, it's like a breathiness, like he just, you yeah. know. Anyway, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh, it's on. okay, it's okay, she already received a pardon from her therapist. I it's know, okay. my therapist said it was okay. <laughs> no, but like, guys, the, the, this is how I know women are wired differently, because I net, we did all that coverage of Trump's first impeachment, mm -hmm. where he was withholding military aid to Ukraine in order to Oops. get Zelensky <laughs> to go on national television and announce like some sham investigation to Putin. I saw multiple videos of Zelensky. I never thought he was hot, never cared like about his physical, you know. It's not physical for me. It's a hundred percent who he is in in being a strong leader, staying there and fighting for his country. It's freaking hot. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it is. Um Yeah. Um, anyway. You could put the B-roll back up if you want, guys. Like, I'm, you don't have to take it down. You don't, <laughs> you know. I don't think it's an accident that uh, he does look really good in that picture. Yeah. Jump in it. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it's, I don't think it's an accident for leaders, military leaders, especially strong le leaders who rescue their country, to have a number of options at their disposal. Right. Right. So, like, uh, I'll do the standard Turkish example. So, Ataturk was the founder of Turkey. Uh, occupied by six different nations, Ataturk uh, drives them out, forms the current Republic of Turkey. And then it was told that perhaps he indulged in many women. 
Um, when you rescue the country and you're a demigod and your picture's up in every uh, room and, and you actually deserved it, right? Yeah, they might, some women might find that attractive. By the way, there were rumors that men also found it attractive. Oh, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, I totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, people respond well to strength, I think. Yeah, you know, I never got to finish this story, so we have just enough to- strength. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember I teased this and I never really got to it. We have just enough time for this story. So it, it, it reminded me of something I saw from the Ukrainian news, that's why I brought it up. So in there's stories in the old days, of course, Turks love to pass on these stories. And remember, every Turkish story has a, 89% chance of being apocryphal, not true. Um, okay. yeah, yep. Now, having said that, we <laughs> proceed nonetheless. Um, so, um, but this one's told kind of by a relative. Uh, so, Ataturk is uh, asking for all Turks to come and fight in the war because they're fighting the Greeks, the British, etc. This is after World War One, and the country's been split apart. At the time, the empire was split apart, and he's trying to put together just the Turkish part, right? And uh, so the, the, he, he's not trying to get the Arab part in the Middle East, he's not trying to get the European part in Eastern Europe, etc. You get it, uh, for what it's worth. Uh, and then, and so, and he says they don't have any weapons. So he's like, send, and they don't have any, um, he, they don't even have uniforms for the soldiers. Uh, and yes, it gets cold in Turkey as well, so they're, they're in a lot of trouble. So he sends a message out to the whole country and says, Send everything you have, right? If you have, especially boots, socks, uh, clothes, etc., because our main problem is the elements, even more than weapons. Okay, and so when I saw the stories in Ukraine, and I saw like the homeless folks were even pitching in. And oh, that's right. They were yeah, collecting yeah. the recyclable bottles for Molotov cocktails, right? Amazing, yeah. So remind me of this story. So in my parents' hometown, small little town in the in the southeastern. Uh, uh, area of Turkey and and the elders of the town, the mayor, etc., are having a meeting, uh, my relative tells me, and uh, and they're talking about, okay, how can we gather stuff and send it to the front lines for to Turkey, etc. And and they're having a conversation and there's the, you know, in the old days they would say, um, you know, well, a, a person who's obviously had some mental issues and was homeless uh, and and called, considered the crazy guy in town, right? And he's constantly trying to barge into the meeting, and they're like, "This is not the time. We're in the middle of an emergency." And he, and he finally barges in anyway, and he said, "I came to give my socks." Okay. Um, really? He found a way to barge into the meeting room where Ataturk was to. No, no, not where Ataturk is. Oh, okay. In the little town, and oh, they all it, know him, it. right? Okay. They all know. Oh, he's the got guy, it, you know, it. right? It's okay, okay. no, not no. But by the way, still. Probably bullshit, okay? But it's a good story. It is a good story, yeah. right? And in, and now in Ukraine, totally real, yeah, right? Yep. And so as you see them doing that, it's impossible not to root for them. Even the right wingers, even as Tucker is calls to tell them, remember, Putin's your daddy, Putin's your daddy, and they're like, yeah. I don't think so. It's yeah, <laughs> it's it's look, it's the selflessness, right? The yeah. selflessness, the strength, and the the. Like when people understand the importance of coming together, I think that's the other thing. Like it, that's been kind of inspiring about what's been happening, like with the Ukrainians coming together, other Eastern European countries coming to their aid. It's like we don't see it often these days where people stick up for one another, where people fight for one another. I love it. Those are the stories that keep me going. I want to get to a point where we all see each other as fellow Americans and we fight for one another. Um, instead of allowing like the worst, most evil people in society to tear us apart, as they've been doing. All right, yeah. super last thing. That's why when sometimes progressives are attacked uh, by alt right or whoever, we rally to their defense. Okay, and it, it, it by the way it exposes us to more attacks. Um, all this, the half the nonsense talking points you've heard about me started when we defended Sam Cedar from alt right attacks. That's right. Okay. And then they got super mad and they targeted me and made up a bunch of horse crap that then the New York Times printed as if it was real, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, but we do that anyway because we got to stick together, okay? We're already too out of power to have any chance of winning if we don't stick together. We must. We must stick together and then we'll have a real shot. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, 
you got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.